Daniel's chart of 70 weeks. Daniel's 69th week ends. The 69th week of Daniel has come to an end with the Messiah being cut off, Jesus dying on the cross. The 70th week of Daniel was supposed to begin, but an additional year is given to Israel to repent. Acts 1 to 8 is the story of that additional year given to Israel. Daniel 9 verses 24 to 27. The book of Acts chapters 1 to 4. Chapter 1. The Kingdom. The book of Acts was completed around 62 AD by Luke the physician and author of the Gospel of Luke. Acts 1 verse 1 The former treatise have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach. The former treatise, a reference to the book of Luke, which served as a legal treatise for Paul's defense in Rome, given to Theophilus, while the book of Acts served as his second treatise. Acts 1 verse 2 Until the day in which he was taken up, after that he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. The day, Jesus ascended forty days after his resurrection. Jesus appeared to Stephen in Acts 7 verse 55 and to Paul in Acts 9 which is mentioned in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 8. John saw him in the Spirit on the Lord's day. Revelation 1 verse 10. Commandments identified as things pertaining to the kingdom, not the church in verse 3. Acts 1 verse 3 to whom also he shewed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God, his passion, his crucifixion. Forty days, a time of waiting in the Bible. The things pertaining to the kingdom, Jesus did not spend forty days teaching about the body of Christ, because that would be revealed to the Apostle Paul. Acts 1 verse 4 and, being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which, saith he, ye have heard of me. Luke 24 verse 49 and, behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem, until ye be endued with power from on high. Wait for the promise of the Father, Jesus would baptize believing Israel with the Holy Ghost, and he would baptize unbelieving Israel with fire, hell. Matthew 3 verse 11 I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost, and with fire. Acts 1 verse 5 For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Baptized with the Holy Ghost, Paul never tells believers to tarry or to wait for the Holy Spirit today because we are baptized by the Holy Spirit into one body the moment we believe the gospel. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 13 Acts 1 verse 6 When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? Restore again the kingdom, Israel's original kingdom ended when they no longer had a king ruling in Jerusalem, which occurred at the carrying away into Babylon. The question was the natural question to ask seeing how Jesus had just spent his last 40 days teaching the apostles things pertaining to the kingdom. They were not expecting him to leave to be gone into exile for 2,000 years. Acts 1 verses 7 to 8 And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons, which the Father hath put in his own power. But ye shall receive power, after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Jesus did not answer yes or no, to their question, because a genuine offer of the kingdom had to be offered to Israel, so they would have no excuse. Since Christ had just risen from the dead, the kingdom could now be offered. Acts 3 verses 19 to 21. If the requirements for the kingdom's arrival would have been met, Israel's repentance and faith in Jesus Christ as the Son of God, then the kingdom would have begun. Ye shall receive power. The purpose for believing Israel to be baptized with the Holy Ghost was for them to receive power to be witnesses unto him. Acts 2 The Holy Ghost is come upon you. This is another way of saying they were baptized with the Holy Ghost, or they were filled with the Holy Ghost.
in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. This was the order they were to go out in with Jerusalem being converted first. This is why the apostles stayed in Jerusalem when the kingdom church was scattered by Saul of Tarsus. They had to win Jerusalem first, as it would become the future capital of Christ's coming kingdom. Acts 8 verse 1 Judea and Samaria could now begin to be reached. Acts 1 verse 9 And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. He was taken up. Jesus departed from them both physically and visibly, just like he will return one day to Israel. He returns for us secretly. 1 Thessalonians 4 verses 13 to 17 But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air, and so, shall we ever be with the Lord. Acts 1 verses 10 to 11 And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Two men stood by them in white apparel, these men were angels. They were possibly the same two as at the tomb earlier, but this time they are standing up, not sitting down. They did not say that Jesus was coming back to rapture them prior to the tribulation period. All Jews knew that they were appointed to go through the time of Jacob's trouble which shall come upon the whole world. Jeremiah 30 verse 7 The rapture would not be revealed until God revealed it to Paul, the apostle of the Gentiles later. 1 Corinthians 15 verses 51 to 54 and 1 Thessalonians 4 colon 13 17. With the ascension of Christ, the 69th week of Daniel was coming to an end, the time of Jacob's trouble, Daniel's 70th week, was the next thing on Israel's prophetic calendar before the kingdom would come. If the apostles would have remembered his words when he was with them then they would have remembered that he had to go away for a while so that the Comforter would come. John 16 verse 7 Nevertheless I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away, for if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you, but if I depart, I will send him unto you. Shall so come as ye have seen him go into heaven, Jesus ascended to heaven visibly and physically, and he will return to the same place in the same way to establish his kingdom, physically and visibly. Zechariah 14 verse 4 the apostles were looking for the kingdom to come, not for the dispensation of grace to be established. Acts 1 verse 12 Then returned they unto Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is from Jerusalem a Sabbath day's journey. The mount called Olivet, the Mount of Olives. A Sabbath day's journey, 2,000 cubits. Numbers 35 colon 5 and Joshua 3 verse 4. It was a little over a half mile. Acts 1 verses 13 to 14 And when they were come in, they went up into an upper room, where abode both Peter, and James, and John, and Andrew, Philip, and Thomas, Bartholomew, and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon Zelotes, and Judas the brother of James. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication, with the women, and Mary the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. Here, the eleven remaining apostles were doing what the Lord commanded them by tarrying in Jerusalem until they were endued with power from on high. This would occur on Pentecost when they were baptized with the Holy Ghost. Acts 1 verse 15 And in those days Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said, The number of names together were about an hundred and twenty. An hundred and twenty. The number 120 appears 12 times in the Old Testament, and once here. 12 times 10 is equal to 120. 
Twelve is the number of Israel, and ten is the number of authority. Ten men were required to judge matters, or to have prayer, or to establish a synagogue. Ruth 4 verse 2 Man's lifespan is reduced from 1,000 years to 120 in Genesis 6 verse 3. Moses dies at 120 years of age in Deuteronomy 34 verse 7. Solomon slew 120,000 sheep at the dedication of the temple in 2 Chronicles 7 verse 5. The Queen of Sheba gave Solomon 120 talents of gold in 1 Kings 10 verse 10. 120 priests sounded trumpets when the temple was dedicated in 2 Chronicles 5 verse 12. The porch that was in front of the temple was 120 cubits. 2 Chronicles 3 verse 4. Darius put 120 princes over his kingdom in Daniel 6 verse 1. Acts 1 verses 16 to 20 men and brethren, this scripture must needs have been fulfilled, which the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David spake before concerning Judas, which was guide to them that took Jesus. For he was numbered with us and had obtained part of this ministry. Now this man purchased a field with the reward of iniquity, and falling headlong, he burst asunder in the midst, and all his bowels gushed out. And it was known unto all the dwellers at Jerusalem, insomuch as that field is called in their proper tongue, a seldoma, that is to say, the field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, Let his habitation be desolate, and let no man dwell therein, and his bishopric let another take. Psalm 109 verse 8 Let his days be few, and let another take his office. Acts 1 verses 21 to 22 Wherefore of these men which have companied with us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John, unto that same day that he was taken up from us, must one be ordained to be a witness with us of his resurrection. Peter got his direction from the Lord himself as part of the commandments that Jesus gave the eleven during those forty days before his ascension. It was necessary that a twelfth apostle be chosen because God ordained that there would be twelve apostles sitting on twelve thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Matthew 19 verse 28 And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me, in the regeneration when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Paul did not meet the requirement to be one of the twelve apostles to the nation of Israel because he did not follow Christ in his earthly ministry beginning at the baptism of John until the day he was taken up from them. Saul would be saved later and become the apostle of the Gentiles, the uncircumcision. Romans 11 verse 13 KJV For I speak to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. Acts 1 verses 23 to 26 And they appointed two, Joseph called Barsabas, who was surnamed Justice, and Matthias. And they prayed, and said, Thou, Lord, which knowest the hearts of all men, shew whether of these two thou hast chosen, that he may take part of this ministry and apostleship, from which Judas by transgression fell, that he might go to his own place. And they gave forth their lots, and the lot fell upon Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven apostles. Both Joseph, Barsabas, and Matthias were there on the day when Jesus ascended back into heaven. Matthias became the twelfth apostle according to the Bible. Paul himself said that Jesus was seen of the twelve, this was soon after the choice of Matthias, and then last of all by him. 1 Corinthians 15 verses 5 to 8 And that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve, after that, he was seen of above five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. After that, he was seen of James, then of all the apostles. And last of all he was seen of me also, as of one born out of due time. The apostles who were filled with the Holy Spirit chose Matthias. Paul was not qualified to be one of Israel's apostles according to the scripture. He was not even saved at this time, but he was later qualified to be the apostle of the Gentiles. Romans 11 verse 13 Chapter 2 The Day of Pentecost Acts 2 verse 1 And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. The day of Pentecost, 
also called the Feast of Weeks, which occurs 50 days after Passover. Exodus 23 verses 14 to 16 and Leviticus 23 verses 15 to 20. It is the only feast day that does not have an exact set date. Leviticus 23 verse 15 was fully come, it was not on the evening after Pentecost. In the Bible the day begins at evening the night before. It was at the third hour of the day during the actual time that the ceremony of the wheat harvest was occurring at the temple, which was only a picture of what was actually occurring with the disciples on that day. Exodus 34 verse 22 And thou shalt observe the feast of weeks, of the firstfruits of wheat harvest, and the feast of ingathering at the year's end. There would be 3,000 men saved plus women and children as the prophetic fulfillment of this feast. They were the first fruits. There will be a much bigger number saved during the year's end feast of ingathering that will not happen until the seven-year tribulation period comes to an end. Acts 2 verses 2 to 4 And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. Cloven tongues like as of fire, the cloven tongues were not real fire. This was not the baptism of fire that John prophesied about in Matthew 3 verse 11. That baptism was for the unbelievers when they are placed into hell. The Holy Spirit, however, would have complete control of these men's tongues on this day. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. In chapter 1 it mentions in verse 8 that the disciples would all be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. These two different verses were speaking about the exact same thing. Notice that it says that they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. They were prompted to speak another language than the one they had learned as a child. Verses 5 to 6. The people involved in this feast on this day were all Jews. There was not a Gentile in the bunch. Proselytes were considered as Jews. This day was the fulfillment of something that the prophet Joel spoke about 500 years earlier that would happen to believers in the nation of Israel. Joel 2 verses 28 to 29 KJV And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions, and also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. Acts 2 verses 5 to 6 And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded, because that every man heard them speak in his own language. Jews, devout men out of every nation, Pentecost was a feast that men were required to attend each year. The Jews that were dispersed in every nation had to make a yearly pilgrimage to Jerusalem according to the law. This was a reversal of what happened when God confounded the tongues at Babel to divide the people. Now he would see Jews saved that all spoke a different language. In the kingdom God will return a pure language unto Israel. Zephaniah 3 verse 9 KJV For then will I turn to the people a pure language, that they may all call upon the name of the Lord, to serve him with one consent. Acts 2 verses 7 to 12 And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born, Parthians, and Medes, and Elamites, and the dwellers in Mesopotamia, and in Judea, and Cappadocia, and Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, and Egypt, and in the parts of Libya about Cyrene, and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. And they were all amazed, and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? Notice that sixteen different languages were spoken, but there were only twelve apostles, so who did the rest of the speaking? Some of the hundred and twenty that were with them in the upper room.
tongues were used on Pentecost to preach the wonderful works of God to all these Jews who spoke different languages now because they had been dispersed to all these other countries. Acts 2 verses 13 to 15 others mocking said, These men are full of new wine. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice, and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words, for these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. Peter, standing up with the eleven, Luke tells us that Peter was with the eleven other apostles on this day. Paul was not an apostle yet. He would become the apostle of the Gentiles. Romans 11 verse 13. The twelve were apostles to the circumcision. Galatians 2 verses 7 to 9. The third hour of the day, 9 a.m. Acts 2 verses 16 to 21. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel, and it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, and on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will shew wonders in heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood, and fire, and vapor of smoke, the sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before that great and notable day of the Lord come, and it shall come to pass, that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Joel 2 verses 28 to 32 KJV, And it shall come to pass afterward, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions, and also, upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. And I will shew wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and the terrible day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered, for in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord hath said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. Some of the things that the prophet Joel mentioned did not occur on that day because this feast was different from all the others. It represented the beginning of the fruit being harvested, and it stretches out until the last piece of fruit is harvested at the end of the Jewish year. Peter did not say that that day was the start of a new program that had been kept secret from the foundation of the world. He did say that this event was prophesied to happen at the onset of the great and notable day of the Lord. He was referring to the tribulation period that Joel spoke of in Joel 2 verse 31, not the birthday of the church. Tongues will be in use again during the tribulation period as well as many other gifts of the Holy Spirit. They will enable the 144,000 to have the same ability to reach the world for the feast of the ingathering mentioned in Exodus 34 verse 22. The things that did not occur 2,000 years ago in Joel's prophecy will occur in those days. Joel 2 verses 30 to 31. Acts 2 verses 22 to 23, men of Israel, hear these words, Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know, him, being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, ye have taken, and by wicked hands have crucified and slain. Ye men of Israel, we do not tell people today that they are guilty of killing the Messiah, but Peter did on this day, because his audience was guilty, and they needed to repent and believe in Jesus as the Christ, the Son of the living God. God was graciously giving them this opportunity along with the signs to verify the message, and its messengers, as being sent from God for the Jew requires a sign. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 22 KJV for the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. Acts 2 verses 24 to 28 Whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. For David speaketh concerning him, I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is on my right hand, that I should not be moved, therefore did my heart rejoice, and my tongue was glad, moreover, also my flesh shall rest in hope, because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Thou hast made known to me the ways of life, 
Thou shalt make me full of joy with thy countenance. Psalm 16 verses 8 to 11. Acts 2 verses 29 to 35 Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his sepulchre is with us unto this day. Therefore, being a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him, that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne, he seeing this before spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. This Jesus hath God raised up, whereof we all are witnesses. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he hath shed forth this, which ye now see and hear. For David is not ascended into the heavens, but he saith himself, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand, until I make thy foes thy footstool. Psalm 110 verse 1 Notice that Peter tells them that David had not ascended into the heavens, because the Jews have an earthly destiny promised to them while the church has a heavenly destiny. David was in paradise, Abraham's bosom, at that time awaiting. Resurrection We in the dispensation of grace have a heavenly destiny, and we go immediately to heaven when we die to be with the Lord. Most believe that paradise is now in heaven today, and that all the Old Testament saints are in heaven separate from the Christians who are in heavenly places. Jesus was able to rise from the dead because death had no hold over him, he had never committed any sin to deserve the wages of sin, neither was he born a sinner as we were. Acts 2 verse 36 Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly, that God hath made that same Jesus, whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. All the house of Israel, verse 36 was not the good news that we preach today, but it was an offer to Israel that if they would repent as a nation then the kingdom that was at hand would soon be established. But not before the time of Jacob's trouble came and ran its course of seven years. There is no way Israel can escape the 70th week of Daniel, the tribulation period. Acts 2 verses 37 to 39 Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart, and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent, and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you, and to your children, and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Repent and be baptized. Peter did not say that they must believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved, but to repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of sins. For the remission of sins, they could get the remission of sins, we however get the forgiveness of sins today in the body of Christ. These were all Jews, or proselytes to Judaism, and they had to repent and be baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of sins. This is not the method we observe today because we are not the Jewish nation, which was being called to repentance for breaking the law covenant that they made with God back at Sinai. Acts 2 verses 40 to 41, and with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about three thousand souls. This untoward generation, inappropriate, wrong, sinful. Three thousand souls, they were saved on the Feast of Pentecost, but do you know what else happened on the same feast day two thousand years earlier? Three thousand souls were killed when Moses brought the law down from Mount Sinai in Exodus 32 verse 28. The 3,000 on Pentecost were baptized with the baptism of repentance so that they might receive the remission of sins and then receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. None of the 3,000 new converts began to speak in tongues on that day because it was not necessary. The people had already heard the gospel of the kingdom and repented. Acts 2 verses 42 to 45 And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together and had all things common, and sold their possessions and goods, and parted them to all men, as every man had need. 
the apostles' doctrine, these kingdom believers were living in full expectation of the kingdom being established in the near future, and had all things common, they were to sell all that they had and to lay it at the apostles' feet. This was in accordance with the commands Christ gave his disciples after his resurrection concerning the kingdom. There was no expectation that the dispensation of grace would intervene for the next 2,000 years until Saul got saved and God revealed the mysteries of the body of Christ to him. Acts 2 verses 46 to 47 And they, continuing daily with one accord in the temple, and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God, and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Here we find just the third mention of the word church in scripture. Some claim that the church did not start until the day of Pentecost. And the Lord added to the church. So, the people who got saved were added to the church on the day of Pentecost, which means a church already existed prior to Pentecost. Scripture is clear that it did not exist prior to Christ saying, I will build my church in Matthew 16 verse 18, but then he mentions the church the second time in Matthew 18 as if it already existed. The church they had that was added to on Pentecost bared no resemblance to the church we know today which is Christ's body. Colossians 1 verse 24 KJV, who now rejoice in my sufferings for you, and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church. This was solely a kingdom church. What we are a part of today would not come to pass until a few years later when Paul became the apostle of the Gentiles. The church which is Christ's body is made up of Jews and Gentiles, which become one in Christ. Gentiles do not get saved for a while yet according to the word of God. This kingdom church will be functioning again during the tribulation period, but it is not in existence today. These in this church made up the little flock of believers mentioned earlier by Christ. Luke 12 verse 32. A church is simply a called out assembly. There was a church in the wilderness in Exodus, but it was not the church we are a part of today. Acts 7 verse 38. The little flock of kingdom believers would inherit the kingdom that would be taken away from those unbelievers in Israel who would not repent. Matthew 21 verse 43 Therefore say I unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you, and given to a nation bringing forth the fruits thereof. Luke 12 verse 32 Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Luke 22 verses 29 to 30 And I appoint unto you a kingdom, as my Father hath appointed unto me, that ye may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Chapter 3 The Offer of the Kingdom Acts 3 verse 1 Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. Peter and John were still going to the temple because they were never instructed not to buy God. They went to the temple because the temple was still a part of God's plan for Jewish worship at this transitional time in their history. Acts 3 verses 2 to 6 And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple, who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple asked an alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth rise up and walk. Why can't we say, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth rise up and walk to a crippled man? We are not apostles verifying the kingdom message with signs and wonders as they were. Peter had power to heal, which came upon them, and then it left them. They had to pray for the Holy Spirit to come upon them and fill them numerous times to have boldness to preach and to do miracles. Acts 4 verse 8 and 31, Luke 24 verse 49, And, behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry. Ye in the city of Jerusalem, until ye be endued with power from on high. 
Acts 3 verses 7 to 10, and he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he leaping up stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God, and they knew that it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. Notice firstly that this man was not saved here, he was healed, and it was not his faith that healed him, but Peter's. If it were his faith, he could have just said, I believe I am healed, and then stood up without any involvement by Peter and John, but he did not. God gave power to his apostles to heal people as a sign to the unbelieving Jews that the messenger and the message were from God. This does not happen today. Acts 3 verses 11 to 16 And as the lame man, which was healed, helped Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's, greatly wondering. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, Ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why look ye so earnestly on us, as though by our own power or holiness we had made this man to walk? The God of Abraham, and of Isaac, and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, hath glorified his son Jesus, whom ye delivered up, and denied him in the presence of Pilate, when he was determined to let him go. But ye denied the Holy One, and the just and desired a murderer to be granted unto you, and killed the Prince of Life, whom God hath raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses. And his name through faith in his name hath made this man strong, whom ye see and know, yet, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Peter used this opportunity to preach to Israel's leaders that they killed their Messiah and released a murderer, and that those signs proved that he was risen. It was a murder indictment. Because of the words of Christ on the cross, to forgive them for they know not what they do, God could lessen the charge against Israel on that day from murder to manslaughter. He would be able to do that for Saul of Tarsus when he stood responsible for Stephen's death. He, like Israel's leaders, did it ignorantly in unbelief. 1 Timothy 1 verse 13, who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. The offer of the kingdom. Acts 3 verses 17 to 21 and now, brethren, I would that through ignorance ye did it, as did also your rulers. But those things, which God before had shewed by the mouth of all his prophets, that Christ should suffer, he hath so fulfilled. Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord, and he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things, which God hath spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. Peter is not referring to the rapture as he spoke to this audience, he was referring to Christ's revealing at the end of the tribulation period. The times of refreshing, these are terms used for the return of Christ to set up his kingdom which comes from the presence of the Lord. This was a legitimate offer of the kingdom to the nation as a whole. We do not tell people today that if they will repent of killing Jesus, that God will send the kingdom to this earth. The times of the restitution of all things, this is another way of saying the kingdom. A time when all things will be restored. Acts 3 verses 22 to 24 For Moses truly said unto the fathers, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren, like unto me. Him shall ye hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you. And it shall come to pass, that every soul which will not hear that prophet shall be destroyed from among the people. Yeah, and all the prophets from Samuel and those that follow after, as many as have spoken, have likewise foretold of these days. Deuteronomy 18 verses 15 to 19 The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren, like unto me, unto him ye shall hearken, according to all that thou desiredst of the Lord thy God in Horeb in the day of the assembly, saying, Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, neither let me see this great fire any more that I die not. And the Lord said unto me, They have well spoken that which they have spoken. 
I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee, and will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. And it shall come to pass, that whosoever will not hearken unto my words which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. The prophets knew nothing of the church, which is Christ's body, but they did know, and foretell about the tribulation period, and the kingdom of which was in reference here. Acts 3 verses 25 to 26 ye are the children of the prophets, and of the covenant which God made with our fathers, saying unto Abraham, And in thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. Unto you first God, having raised up his son Jesus, sent him to bless you, in turning away every one of you from his iniquities. Genesis 12 verse 3 And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. God sent his son to the nation of Israel to turn them from their sins first, so that they could in turn bless the Gentiles, which unfortunately did not happen at his first coming. After the tribulation period Israel will turn from their sins and believe in their Messiah and become a blessing to the Gentile nations. Chapter 4 Filled with the Holy Ghost Acts 4 verses 1 to 4 And as they spake unto the people, the priests, and the captain of the temple, and the Sadducees, came upon them, being grieved that they taught the people, and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they laid hands on them, and put them in hold unto the next day, for it was now eventide. Howbeit many of them which heard the word believed, and the number of the men was about five thousand. The Pharisees believed in the resurrection while the Sadducees did not. It was because of the resurrection that the Sadducees had the big problem. It was the biggest thing that set them apart from the Pharisees, and if it were true then they as the intellectuals would look pretty stupid. The number of the men, even though the number of the men that were saved was about 5,000 the kingdom could not come to Israel yet because the leaders of Israel were still rejecting their Messiah. The reason for the listing of three and five thousand men, without the women or children being counted, was because every male was required by Moses' law to attend three feasts each year, not the women. Exodus 23 verse 17 The resurrection is mentioned here, which was, and, still is, the hope of the nation of Israel. They did not want anyone to believe that Jesus rose from the dead because that would link him to their belief of a resurrection into their kingdom. It would clearly identify Jesus as the Messiah who would bring about the kingdom. Acts 4 verses 5 to 12 And it came to pass on the morrow, that their rulers, and elders, and scribes, and Annas the high priest, and Caiaphas, and John, and Alexander, and as many as were of the kindred of the high priest, were gathered together at Jerusalem. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, By what power, or by what name, have ye done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, Ye rulers of the people, and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man, by what means he is made whole, be it known unto you all, and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone, which was set at naught of you builders, which is become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, Peter is again filled with the Holy Ghost here to give him boldness verse 13. The stone which was set at not of you builders, Peter quotes from Matthew 21 verse 42, who was quoting David in Psalms 118 verse 22. Jesus is the chief cornerstone that Israel's leaders rejected. Peter laid this indictment at their feet. He said that they were guilty of killing the Messiah. They would have none of this, but they were confronted with an actual healing which lent itself to the people to agree with the apostles that they were sent of God. Acts 4 verses 13 to 23 Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled, and they took knowledge of them, that they had been with Jesus. And beholding the man, which was healed standing with them, they could say nothing against it. But when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves, saying, What shall we do to these men? 
For that indeed a notable miracle hath been done by them is manifest to all them that dwell in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. But that it spread no further among the people, let us straightly threaten them, that they speak henceforth to no man in this name. And they called them and commanded them not to speak at all nor teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. So, when they had further threatened them, they let them go, finding nothing how they might punish them, because of the people, for all men glorified God for that which was done. For the man was above forty years old, on whom this miracle of healing was shewed. And being let go, they went to their own company, and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said unto them. The man was above forty years old, forty is the number of testings in the Bible. How could they be quiet when they had seen God's power displayed again before their eyes? Acts 4 verses 24 to 26, And when they heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord, and said, Lord, Thou art God, which hast made heaven, and earth, and the sea, and all that in them is, who by the mouth of Thy servant David hast said, Why did the heathen rage, and the people imagine vain things? The kings of the earth stood up, and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord, and against His Christ. Psalm 2 verses 1 to 2 Why do the heathen rage, and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together, against the Lord, and against His anointed, saying, Acts 4 verses 27 to 30 For of a truth against thy holy child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles, and the people of Israel, were gathered together, for to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined before to be done. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings, and grant unto thy servants, that with all boldness they may speak thy word, by stretching forth thine hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child Jesus. With all boldness they may speak thy word, there were no prayers for protection from persecution here, but for boldness to witness, and for signs to follow that would verify their message. They are filled with the Holy Ghost again. Acts 4 verse 31 And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the word of God with boldness. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost, they were filled again and again as needed, and they spoke the word with boldness. The first time was at Pentecost, it was called the baptism with the Holy Ghost. It was also called being endued with power from on high. Luke 24 verse 49, Acts 4 verses 32 to 33, And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul, neither said any of them that out of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things common. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. They had all things common, here, and in the beginning of chapter 5, we see this exclusively Jewish church practicing kingdom teachings because they were taught so by Christ after his resurrection. Rich people will not rule over the poor in the kingdom reign of Christ. The rich had to sell all that they had and follow Christ if they wanted to enter into the kingdom. The kingdom that was at hand, and was offered, was rejected by the chief priests who said to Pilate, We have no king but Caesar. John 19 verse 15 Acts 4 verses 34 to 37 Neither was there any among them that lacked, for as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the prices of the things that were sold and laid them down at the apostles' feet, and distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. And Hoseas, who by the apostles was surnamed Barnabas, which is, being interpreted, the son of Consolation, a Levite, and of the country of Cyprus, having land, sold it, and brought the money, and laid it at the apostles' feet. As many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them, this was in accordance with what Christ taught during his three-year ministry concerning the coming kingdom. Luke 12 verses 32 to 33 Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell that ye have and give alms, 
Provide yourselves bags which wax not old, a treasure in the heavens that faileth not, where no thief approacheth, neither moth corrupteth. Luke 14 verses 25 to 35 And there went great multitudes with him, and he turned, and said unto them, If any man come to me, and hate not his father, and mother, and wife, and children, and brethren, and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And whosoever doth not bear his cross, and come after me, cannot be my disciple. For which of you, intending to build a tower, sitteth not down first, and counteth the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it? Lest haply, after he hath laid the foundation, and is not able to finish it, all that behold it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build, and was not able to finish. Or what king, going to? Make war against another king, sitteth not down first, and consulteth whether he be able with ten thousand to meet him that cometh against him with twenty thousand? Or else, while the other is yet a great way off, he sendeth an ambassage, and desireth conditions of peace. So likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. Salt is good, but if the salt have lost his savor, wherewith shall it be seasoned? It is neither fit for the land, nor yet for the dunghill, but men cast it out. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Riches and the Kingdom Luke 18 verses 18 to 30 And a certain ruler asked him, saying, Good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? None is good, save one, that is, God. Thou knowest the commandments, do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness, honor thy father and thy mother. And he said, All these have I kept from my youth up. Now when Jesus heard these things, he said unto him, Yet lackest thou one thing, sell all that thou hast, and distribute unto the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come, follow me. And when he heard this, he was very sorrowful for he was very rich. And when Jesus saw that he was very sorrowful, he said, How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? For it is easier for a camel to go through a needle's eye than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. And they that heard it said, Who then can be saved? And he said, The things which are impossible with men are possible with God. Then Peter said, Lo, we have left all, and followed thee. And he said unto them, Verily I say unto you, There is no man that hath left house, or parents, or brethren, or wife, or children, for the kingdom of God's sake, who shall not receive manifold more in this present time, and in the world to come life everlasting. The partial blindness that had set in for Israel because of their unbelief will be removed at the onset of the tribulation period. Romans 11 verse 25 They will once again practice these same kingdom principles of selling all that they have, because their money will be useless in the tribulation period. Their homes will be confiscated if they do not take the mark of the beast. The son of consolation, this Levite owned land and sold it. The Levites were not supposed to own any land as God was supposed to be their inheritance. This Levite also lived in Cyprus. How could a Levite, a priest, be a priest if he lived in Cyprus? He could not. This is a small picture of just how far Israel had departed from God's word. Numbers 18 23-24